Hello. All right. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So uh, today I will be talking about explicit RAID 1 non manable code for local tempering. Uh, so this is joint work with Stevia Gupta and uh, Hamata Maji. So let me first tell you uh, what is non manable code. So you have already seen some of this from Marshall's talk, but let me just quickly review, uh, remind you. So non manable code is a primitive introduced by Zimbowski, PyTrack, and Wits back in 2010. Uh, so this primitive is originally motivated by temper resilient cryptography. So imagine you have a signature schemes where the adversary might be able to temper the internal state of the challenger and then obtain a signature under some tempered secret key and then try to forge the signature under the original secret key. Under such tempering attacks, the classical security guarantee of the signature schemes does not say anything about whether the adversary could succeed or not. So the idea is that if we use uh, non manable code to encode a secret key, this could help preserve the security of the signature schemes, even in the presence of such tempering attacks. So intuitively, uh, non manable code is a coding scheme such that if some tempering happened on the code word, then the tempered code word either encodes the original message or some message that is completely unrelated with the original message. Specifically, let's say you have a message that is first being encoded and then tempered by some function f, and then uh, you get the tempered code word, and then you decode this tempered code word to get the tempered, me uh, tempered message. So we want to say that this tempered message, message tilde, could only be related with the original message in three following ways. The first way is by identity function, meaning that the tempered message is identical to the original message. The second way is a special symbol bot, simply means that the tempered code word is an invalid encoding. And finally, uh, the third way is a constant function, meaning that this tempered message is being fixed to some constant, no matter what the original message is. More formally, non manable code ensures that for this tempering function f, we can, uh, we have, there exists a simulator that outputs a distribution over these three types of functions, such that the, the distribution of the tempered message in the real world is indistinguishable from this simulated distribution. So note that this simulator only takes the tempering function as the input and is oblivious to the original message. So if you think about this uh, definition for a while, you will quickly realize that this tempering function cannot be an arbitrary function. The reason is very simple. So since this is a coding schemes, the tempering function can always first decode the code word first, and then flip a bit of the message, and then re-encode. In this way, the tempered message, message tilde, will always be the original message with one bit flipped. Then there cannot be any simulator that simulates this process. Therefore, non manable code is all, all, always defined with respect to a fixed set of tempering functions. And just like error correcting code, we define the rate as the, length of, the ratio between the length of the message and the length of the code word. So high rate, intuitively, high rate here implies that the overhead of achieving non manability is low. So since the introduction of non manable code, uh, after many years of research, we find that non-manable code is actually closely related with many other primitives in crypto. For example, in the field of privacy amplification, uh, we have this primitive called non-manable extractors, and it turns out that non-manable extractors and non-manable code are very closely related. And we have many excellent research going on in this area. Next, uh, in the setting of multi-party computation, we also have found constructions of non manable commitments using non manable code as building blocks. In uh, relatively new primitives uh, called non manable secret sharing, many of those constructions of non manable secret, secret, secret sharing also use non manable code as a building block. So, the research objective of this line of research is to find explicit construction of non manable code with high rate against the sophisticated tempering families. So high rate directly translate into high efficiency in those applications and reductions. 
and the sophistication of such uh, tampering families uh, implies a stronger security guarantee. So in this talk, we will be focusing on local tampering. So let me first tell you what is local tampering using a very simple example. So here, you, uh, we have a code word that consists of four bits, uh, one, two, three, four. So this, this tampering function will take these four bits as input and output a tampered code word. So here, the first input bit will depend on, uh, the first output bits will only depend on the first input bit and the second input bit. And the second, output bit will depend on the first input bit and the third input bit, and so on. So we say a tampering function f has delta output locality if every output bit depends on at most delta input bits. So here in this example here, f, uh, every output bit depends on precisely two input bits. So f has, uh, f has two output locality. Analogously, uh, we say that f has delta input locality if every input bit influence on at most delta output bits. So in this example here, the first bit actually influence on all the, uh, all the output bits. Therefore, this function f has four input locality. So we say a tampering function f is delta local if it has delta output locality. So do note that for delta local tampering functions, uh, this function can actually have arbitrarily large input locality, just like this example here. And the this fact actually turns out to present significant technical challenges when designing non malleable code. So in this work, we gave a compiler that compiles a low-rate non malleable code into a rate one uh, non malleable code. So specifically, for any constant c between zero and one, we gave a compiler that compiles a low-rate non malleable code against local tampering with an appropriate leakage resilience property into a rate one non malleable code against this constant C times log n local tampering. So Ball et al. gives the first feasibility result of non malleable code against local tampering. Our compiler, instantiated with uh, Ball et al.'s construction, gives us a rate one non malleable code against C times log n local tampering. And as a corollary of our result, we obtain a rate one non malleable code against NC0 tampering. This is because NC0 tampering is all the tampering with constant locality. So to give you a more detailed comparison, when the locality is a constant or NC0 tampering, Bohr et al.'s construction has, a rate, has constant rate while our work has rate one. When the locality goes beyond constant and is smaller than the threshold we set here, our uh, Bohr et al.'s construction has a decaying rate, while our work still has rate one. When the locality goes beyond the log n, Bohr et al.'s construction, uh, the rate of their construction has, is linear dependent on the inverse of the locality. Unfortunately, our work does not extend to this case. So as a very cool application of non malleable code against local tampering, Bohr et al. Con uh, construct non malleable code against AC0 tampering. So in this application here, it actually requires the, the, the building block, the non malleable code against local tampering to have a very high locality. So our work here does not improve the rate of their, uh, their AC tampering here. So before I go into our compiler, let me tell you a bit more about what do we know about uh, non malleable code against local tampering. So we have very nice Monte Carlo constructions that tells us when does non malleable code, rate one non malleable code exist based on how large the tampering family is. Such Monte Carlo constructions implies construction in the common reference string model. So firstly, Faust et al. tells us that when the tampering family has size two to the poly n, uh, rate one non malleable code exists. And moreover, their construction is efficient. When the tampering family size goes beyond that, and it's actually two to the two to the small o of n, Chilachi and Guruswami's results tells us that even in this case, rate one non malleable code still exists. However, their construction is inefficient. So a quick calculation will show you that 
For a Delta local tempering family, the size of this family is roughly 2 to the 2 to the delta times n. So if you plug in delta with order of log n, false as also result tells us that efficient rate one non malleable code exists in this case. When delta goes beyond log n and is still small of n, uh, Chilachan and Guruswami tells us that rate one non malleable code exists. However, it remains unclear if efficient non rate one non malleable code exists in this case. So as a reminder, our work here shows that we can get explicit efficient rate one non malleable code when delta is smaller than some constant times log n. So before our work, in a plane model, all the known explicit uh, rate one constructions are actually against functions that has input locality one and output locality one. Uh, such tempering families is referred to as bit level tempering in the, uh, in the literature. So now let me tell you about our compiler. So fix any constant C between zero and one, our compiler will use the following ingredients with appropriate parameters. First, we will be using error correcting secret sharing schemes that has read one, and the near linear uh, distance, and also near linear independence. Such a error correcting secret sharing schemes could be based on standard Reed Solomon code. Secondly, we will be using a base non malleable code that is secure against order of log n local tempering. So, this base non malleable code could possibly have very low rate, and it's re uh, we, in addition to non malleability, we require it to be resilient to a constant fraction of leakage. Finally, we will also be using a pseudo random generator against a finite state machine by uh, Nissan. So we remarked that other uh, alternative pseudo random objects potentially also suffice here. So given these three ingredients, uh, error correcting secret sharing schemes, a base non malleable code, and a, a suitable pseudo random objects, our compiler will use these three ingredients in a black box way to, to output a rate one non malleable code against the C times log n local tempering families. So our construction draws inspiration from the following two components. The first is a rate amplification techniques by Agrawa et al. And second is a PRG techniques by Bo et al. So let me tell you a bit about both of them. So Agawa et al. constructed a rate one non malleable code against a bit level tempering. So here is just a very simple example to, uh, of what a bit level tempering looks like. So such functions has input locality one and output locality one. So their compiler is co constructed in the following way. So given any message, the first, they, they first encoded this message using error correcting secret sharing schemes to obtain a code word A. Next, they will sample a subset of those indices from code word A, and for roughly half of those indices, they intentionally introduce errors into this code word. And for the other, roughly other half, half of those indices, they will keep those bits untouched. Next, they will encode this uh, consistency check information using a base non malleable code. So their final code word consists of two parts. The main code word C, and, uh, the main code word C which is error correcting code with error introduced, and then a tag which contains, excuse me, contains the consistent check information. So to decode this code word, one first decodes the er erroneous error correcting code and then cross-check the information of those errors with the tag to see if, if they are consistent. So unfortunately, their techniques here does not extend to tempering functions with high input locality. Actually, their uh, compiler does not even extend to functions with input locality too. So in order to uh, deal with this technical challenge, we use a PRG technique by Bo et al. to circumvent the technical challenges posed by input bits with high input locality. So on a very, very high level, imagine you have a code word uh, that has two parts, the left part and the right part. So this technique will keep the left part as it is, and then 
hide the right part among many, many redundant bits. And the position of those, right, uh, of those informative bits from the right part is hide among this string pseudo-randomly. So using this, uh, one can argue that it is very unlikely that an informative bit from this string actually have a high input locality. So this property turns out to be very useful for our proof. So given, uh, the, uh, so our compiler first follows the framework by Agawa et al. We also encoded the message using an error correcting code and then introduced some errors and also keep some bits untouched and record this information use a base non-manual code. And after that, we will be using a PRG to hide this, inf uh, this tag uh, among, among, random, uh, uh, among a list of strings that contain both the redundant bits and the informative bits from the tag. So our final code word consists of three parts. The main code word, which is an error correcting code with errors introduced, then a seed for the PRG, and then this string here that contains both redundant bits and informative bits from tag. So the length of this code word is roughly the same as the length of the main code word. So let me give you a very brief sketch of our proof. So our proof roughly follows from the, uh, uh, from the following way. So we first argue that the tampering happens on the tag is actually independent of the message here. Then, given this observation, we, we can see that the tampering on the uh, tag either keeps the uh, consistent check information identical or fix this uh, consistent check information to a constant. So this is given by the property of the base non malleable code. So finally, our, proof, our intuition is that if the adversary keeps this tag identical, then the only valid tampering is to also keep the main code word identical. Conversely, if the adversary fix the tags to be some constant string, then the only t valid tampering is to also fix the main code word to some constant. So th the idea is that if the adversary does not temper this code word in this way, then with probability one minus, one minus negligible, he will, always, he will always fail the consistency check. So the hardness of this proof completely lies in how do we prove this intuition. So unfortunately, uh, I don't have time to uh, go into uh, the details of this proof. I would be happy to discuss this offline, and uh, I will end my talk here. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, you said that there was a previous result that supported log locality. I think the, one of the authors was Faust. Yes. And it was uh, efficient. So can you explain again what is the difference? Uh, so with your they result? show that uh, it's a probabilistic construction. They show that actually with probability one, their probabilistic construction will be secure against that tampering family. However, they, uh, we cannot de-randomize such uh, Monte Carlo construction. So it's, it's not an explicit construction then? No, it's not explicit. Thank you. Yeah. More questions? Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.